Here I'll give you 10 tricks for entering formulas and functions in Excel. Before we start, check the video description and click the link to Teach Excel so you can download the files for the tutorial and follow along. And make sure to subscribe and accept notifications so you can see all the new tutorials. Here I've got a very basic table, number of days, how many calls per day, total length of the calls, and I want to figure out the cost. And I've got a cost cell right here. Now the very first thing that we're going to do is to tell you how to very quickly enter absolute and relative cell references, or put the dollar signs in front of the columns and the rows. So to get the cost, I would take this cell here and multiply it by this cell over here. However, as you may know, the second that I copy this down, these references are relative, so they are going to change. But we don't want the cost cell to change. So let's go back up to this formula. And the quick way to add absolute and relative cell references is to simply hit F4. So put your cursor on whatever cell you want to affect within the formula or whatever range and hit F4. The first time it's going to make both references, column and row absolute. Second time, just the row. Third, just the column. Fourth, it's going to take the dollar signs away. So when you're entering the formula, just equals that cell times the other cell and once you click the next cell or range reference simply hit F4 and it automatically makes it an absolute cell reference. So it's going to make it much easier to enter the formula much faster. Next thing, this isn't really one of the tricks here, when you're entering a formula next to a line of other formulas you simply double click the bottom right hand, double click the quick fill handle and it's going to copy everything down. If you have a formula down here it will only go as far as that The next thing is a quick way to enter arguments inside of functions. So let's say over here that we want to sum for one reason or another the cost for days 1, 3, and 5. You could do equals sum, open parentheses, and once you click each number, you have to do a comma for the argument. But that's relatively time consuming. What you can actually do is simply hold the control key and then click the cells that you want to sum. So we've got day one, day three, day five. And notice that the commas are automatically put in there for me. So let's do that quickly once more. Equals sum, let's hit the tab to automatically get the function in there. Now for the arguments, hold control. Click the first argument, second argument, third argument, enter. There you go. That's a neat little one that most people forget about. Now let's go to another example in the worksheet. Here I've got a table with some parts. I've got a table with the price for the parts. And I've got some things down here that I'd like to do. This brings us to the next tip, which is that you can hit F9 to preview formula calculation. So let's say that we didn't know where all these range references pointed to. They could be on different worksheets. You wanted to see what A13 actually equaled. You can hit F9 to see what that would evaluate to. So F9 is going to go ahead and calculate the part of the formula that you selected. So it tells me that in cell A13, I've got ASC-1. Now I can see that right here, but if it's in a separate workbook, this would be very helpful to figure out exactly what's going on within my formula. So I could even do that with the entire VLOOKUP, select it, F9, and it's going to tell me that it will return 25. Now the very important thing, if you evaluate the formula like this, do hit the escape key. So if I do not hit escape right now and I just hit enter, it's going to save what you just saw. So B13 times 25. So the VLOOKUP formula is going to be gone. So be very careful when you use F9, this little trick to see what the formula is going to evaluate to. Now let's hit Control Z to undo that. When you go in here, just select whatever part you want to evaluate, F9, and then once you're done checking it out, hit the escape key to revert back to how it was. Now let's check out these formulas down here. I've got a performance formula, and this is one big formula. What it's going to do is it's going to find out which one of these parts has sold the least amount as far as revenue is concerned. And it's only going to evaluate that if this evaluates to true. This will evaluate to true 
only if the sum of the revenue is less than 12,000. Now the logic isn't as important as the fact that I've made some complicated formulas. Now let's take a look at those and let's use the evaluate function to figure out what's going on. Now for the next trick, a very important thing, F9 isn't always going to work. F9 is like the little baby version of the next trick. And the next trick is to go to the formulas tab and click evaluate formula. And what this is going to do is to take you step by step through the formula. So it will underline the first part that it's going to evaluate or basically calculate. In this case, it's the min function. And you click the evaluate button to see what the result would be. In that case, the minimum would be 315. Now it evaluates the very next part, which is, is 315 less than 1000? Evaluate. Evaluates to true. Next, we get to the next part, which is E18. Now this is important. If there is a cell reference within the formula or function and you are evaluating it, when you get to that cell reference, you can click step in to actually see what formula or functions might be in that cell. So in cell E18, we can see that we've got an if statement with a sum function inside of it. And then we could even go ahead and start to evaluate this cell. So evaluate the sum function, true or false, and what it would return. So that way we can get a much better understanding of how we get a certain result from a formula. Now we hit step out to go back into the original cell, and we can continue to evaluate it. So if you're having trouble with your formulas, your functions, you don't understand why you get the result that you get, the evaluate formula feature is really, really, really helpful. And you can just keep going through it all the way down until you get the final result. Hit restart to do it over again. And don't forget, once you get to a cell reference, not a range reference, but a cell reference, you can go to that cell and see what's in that, or click step out to get back out into the original cell. This is one of my favorite tools for evaluating really complex formulas in Excel. Now let's move to the next tip on the formulas tab in the formula auditing box where we just were to click evaluate formula. You have a lot of very, very helpful little features here. And the next one is the trace precedence and trace dependence. So let's say you've got a complex formula or function like this one and you want to see what cells it's referring to. And you want to see that visually without having to select the cell. Click Trace Precedence, and it's going to give you an arrow. It says that this formula uses this range, this range, and this cell right here. So now you know if you change anything in one of these ranges or this cell right here, it's going to affect this formula. And you could leave that up and then click another cell and hit Trace Precedence. So you can have a bunch of different arrows all throughout your spreadsheet to show you visually how everything is linked. You can hit remove arrows so you can get them all off. That doesn't affect your formulas at all. It just gives you a more visual representation of how everything is linked together. You can hit trace dependence to see, okay, I've got this cell here, but if I change it, what other cells are going to be affected? Well, click trace dependence. You can see it only affects this cell here. But you could also do the same with a cell that doesn't have a formula or function, like A14. Trace dependence, and we can see a14 affects this cell over here, and it affects this cell down here. So even though you could have lots and lots of arrows, I don't really recommend putting tons and tons of arrows on all at once, or <laughs> it ends up being a little bit complex. But for just a few formulas and a few functions to see how everything works together, it's quite helpful. Remove the arrows, or you could remove just the precedent or the dependent ones, or both together. Another tip for seeing your formulas visually without having to double click the cell that they're in is in the formula auditing box, click show formulas. Now I'm going to zoom out here a bit for this. What that's going to do is it's going to show you all of the formulas in your worksheet. So I can see up here I've got formulas. I can see here I've got one. And you don't have to double click the cell or anything. But notice that when you do click a formula or a function, the cell and range references that are used in that formula or function will appear. So here I can see this range, this range, and this cell are used in this one. If I click this one, I can see just this range is used in it. Click up here, I can see it uses this cell, 
and that cell. So once again, just another way to visually represent the formulas and the functions that are in your spreadsheet to make it a little bit easier to figure out what's going on. It allows you to check your formulas very quickly. Let's say you've got VLOOKUPs like this. They've been copied down. There's an error in one of them. You don't know what the hell's wrong. Well, now you can see everything very quickly. A13, 14, 15, 16, B13, 14, 15, 16. And you can see, are there any discrepancies? What doesn't look like it should look like? And then go down. So I really love the formula auditing box and the formulas tab. It is so helpful, especially when you get a spreadsheet that somebody else made that doesn't quite make sense. You can still edit the formulas like normal, by the way. Just double click the cell and it's not a problem. Now to get rid of that, just click the show formulas button again. So let's move on to the very next thing. This is very helpful. So let's say I've got VLOOKUPs. I have the revenue here. Everything is good. Now what I want is I want to make it so that these values are just values. I don't need the formulas anymore. So what's a quick way to do that? Well, I'm not going to type it out, 1175, 1122. That's just going to take forever. It's really boring. Really quick way to do this. Use the keyboard shortcuts, Control, Shift, hit the down arrow key. It's going to select everything. Control C to copy it. Then Alt, E, S, V, Enter. Now you'll notice everything is the value. So if you're going to do that really quickly, got a big workbook, it's as quick as this. And you're done. Now what did we do? We copied it, and then we pasted special values. So when you're going through the keyboard shortcuts, you get to the Paste Special screen, and then you simply select Values using the keyboard shortcut, and hit OK. Now you could get here as well by right-clicking the cells that you just copied, and then going down here to Paste Special. And then you could click one of the options here that are very visual, so you could do Paste Values. But the keyboard shortcut, so much faster. Just remember, select everything. Control-C to copy. Alt-E-S-V. Enter. Don't even think about it. Now you're done. That feature right there is going to save you a lot of time and a lot of headaches. Now another really, really helpful feature in Excel is to use the special go to feature on the home tab go all the way over to the right and go to find and select and then go to special here you can choose which cells you want to select based on what's in them Do I want to select cells with comments constants formulas blanks current region objects you've got lots of different options here so if I want to select all cells that have formulas I click the formulas option and I can check or uncheck one of these sub options right here hit OK now all the cells that have formulas have been selected so you could do whatever you want with them you could hit the delete key and <laughs> remove them all you could highlight them whatever you want to do with them the very very helpful things that I find to use this for include the formulas so you can choose which formulas you want to use as well as if you've selected a very, very, very large column of data or row of data and you want to locate the blanks to delete them, you can click blanks. So if I do this on a worksheet like this, no cells were found because I already had cells selected. What you'd want to do for a column is go like this. Select column B, find and select, go to special, blanks, OK. And now it's going to select all the cells that are blank within your data set. So obviously it knows these cells down here aren't in your data set. It doesn't matter. But it selected these cells. And what you can do then is right-click those cells, go to Delete, and then tell it to shift the cells up after you've deleted it, and it will bunch all the data together. Now, in this example, that doesn't work so well with that. But if you have a large table of data and some of the rows are completely blank, that's how you would delete those rows or those individual cells very quickly, or just locate the blank cells so you can do something with them. So if you don't select anywhere in the worksheet, it's going to search the entire worksheet to find something. If you just select one area, like say up here, it's going to search that specific area. So formulas, now we only have these formulas and it's not going to select any of the other ones. Once again, we're quickly locating cells with certain types of data within them. 
Some other really helpful things with the GoTo Special include finding conditional formats and cells that have data validation. Just remember, Home tab, Find and Select, GoTo Special. Now let's go to the last two tips. One, how to find a function very quickly. So let's say I've got text like this, and it has too many spaces. Well, is there a function that can remove those spaces? I don't know. So what you can do is you can go to click this little tiny button right here, the Insert Function button. You can also find that button on the Formulas tab all the way here on the left. Insert Function or hit Shift F3. Now the benefit of this is that you can search through all the functions in Microsoft Excel. You can choose a category here if you already kind of know what you want or just go up here, delete all this and type, let's see, uh, remove spaces from my text. Okay, let's see, what do I have here? I've got text and you select that and it tells you converts a value to text. Nope. Trim removes all spaces. Okay, great. So the second option works. So this is like a little tiny Google for Excel functions. Now once you click that or select it, hit OK, and it's going to help you enter the function. So I know that the argument for this one, this one only has one argument, is the text argument, and then it's going to tell me text. It is the text from which you want spaces removed. Okay, so let's see what cell do I want to remove spaces from, A1, and then it's going to give me a little sample of the final result. So this is the value in the cell right here, and this is what the final result would look like. So not only is it going to help me locate the function, it's going to hold my hand and walk me through entering all the arguments for the function. Then when it looks OK to me, I can hit OK. And now I've located a function which I didn't even know existed, potentially, and I've entered it correctly into Excel. And if you select a cell with a formula and hit the Insert Function button, it's going to take you back to the screen to help you enter that function or formula. So just remember, Shift F3, or go to the little button right here next to the formula bar or formulas tab, insert function. Very helpful. Now let's talk about one thing that you might not always encounter, which is essentially if you have too many links, too many formulas, too many functions on a worksheet, it's going to dramatically, or it can dramatically slow down the calculation or just the general operation of your spreadsheet. Now this depends basically on the speed of your computer. If you have a really fast computer, maybe this won't ever happen. But if you have, let's say, 10 million links between one workbook and another workbook, it's going to slow things down. And the thing is that every time you enter anything into Excel, in any cell, Excel recalculates every formula and function on that worksheet. Now right here, it wasn't a big deal, right? I can just type and enter, no problem. But let's say that I have the now function. It's going to give me the date and time. Now let's say that I am going to put that in the entire column and then copy that over. Let's say over to here. You can see Excel is already working, so it's taking a bit of time. And now, all right, I've got the date and time in millions and millions of cells. So let's go over here. And let's try and enter anything. 23. Still waiting. OK, so it took a couple seconds to actually do it. Equals now about two seconds, one to two seconds to actually calculate the formula, enter it. And every single time, it re-updates this over here on the left. Now, if I had links to other workbooks, other spreadsheets, this would take even longer. I mean, it could take minutes. It could take hours, depending on your spreadsheet. Some people have done some pretty crazy stuff that doesn't work so well in Excel. But how do we get around that? How do we get around this waiting because it's going to take forever? Well, on the Formulas tab, you can go all the way to the right and go to Calculation Options. Click that and change it from Automatic to Manual. Now when you do this, every time that you enter something over here, doesn't matter what, nothing else on the spreadsheet is going to calculate. 
So notice this still says 1028, and this now function says 1029. So the only way to get one of these to update over here is to go to the cell, select it, hit Enter, or you simply hit F9 on the keyboard. Every time you hit F9, it's going to calculate everything. But it's not going to do this automatically. So this will make it so that you can actually do your normal things within the workbook, within the spreadsheet, without having to wait a long time each time you hit enter for everything to update and calculate. However, do remember that it's on manual calculation. Otherwise, you could be working this spreadsheet a week from now, a month from now, a year from now, and thinking, God, these numbers look really weird. It doesn't look like they've updated in a while. What the hell is going on? Just remember, you turn calculation options to manual. So I'm going to go ahead and put that back on automatic just to make life easier. And now the spreadsheet will function as normal once again. But that's a really nice little tip to make it easier to work in your spreadsheet when you have so many links and so many formulas and so many functions that it just wants to function very slowly. And that's it for these tips and tricks. One little note, if you do download this workbook, I will delete all of these formulas right here just to make it so the workbook's a little bit smaller and easier to manage. So if you want to test out the calculation feature, you can go ahead and add the now function to millions of cells like I did in this example. I hope you liked the tutorial. If it was helpful, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and make sure to subscribe and accept notifications so you can see all the new tutorials.